1996, id Software released Quake to the world. It would become a staple of PC gaming, first-person shooters, and 3D graphics. While id's 1993 game, Doom, is considered to be the granddaddy of 3D first-person shooters, Quake actually used a real-time 3D rendering engine. It was a far step away from the Doom engine's clever use of binary space partitioning. Nowadays, 3D graphics are pretty standard for most games. It's something we've come to expect in games. But Quake, in a way, pioneered 3D games. So perhaps you'd like to look back upon this game and see what all the fuss was about. That's awesome! So perhaps you go and buy yourself a copy on GOG and you install it and you run it to have it look like this. Yeah. Welcome to the best 1996 had to offer, but never fear, as we can fix most of the problems quite easily. Which is where the point of this video comes into play. How to make Quake perform its best on modern systems. Now, if you really want, you can still run Quake in its original executables. Kind of. GL Quake will look something like this. Win Quake would look something like this. And the original Quake EXE looks like this. Yeah. That's why I said kind of. Don't ever expect the original Quake executable to run on any system past Windows 98. It was originally designed to run on DOS, so you would start the EXE in Windows and it would invoke DOS. This renders the original EXE unplayable on any Windows NT system, which is pretty much any OS from Windows XP onwards. So if super pixely games are your thing, WinQuake should suffice. And GL Quake makes fantastic use of the then new OpenGL API. Back in 1999, the Quake engine was made open source under a GNU GPL. And since then, tons of different engines have been released to improve on some of the bugs the game had, improve the visuals, and even add new features to the game. For the purpose of this video, I will be using a popular engine called Quakespasm. As described in its README file, it includes support for 64-bit CPUs and a custom music playback, and includes a new sound driver, some graphical niceties, and numerous bug fixes and other improvements. So grab a copy off their website and extract those files into your Quake install directory. So now, you'll fire up your game, set it to the proper resolution, and start killing, right? Well, if you haven't already noticed, there's no music. This is going to be the bulk of the setup process and can take some time to do. Quake used Redbook standard CDDA for its music that was created by Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails. So back in the day, Quake played CD quality music, meaning that it read the music off of the disc as the files, which were about 600 megabytes, would be a little large to store on a hard drive at the time. Sadly, Quake Spasm doesn't support the CD audio. However, as mentioned previously, it allows for custom music playback, which means we can rip the music to WAV files and retain that CDDA quality. So to do this, we need to mount our game's CD image, which GOG gladly provides in the form of Q and GOG files with something like Daemon Tools. We're then going to fire a Windows Media Player. I know it sucks, but bear with me. We're going to set it to rip in WAV format and it will choose the only quality it has, which is the highest for CDDA quality, which is what we want. We'll rip the tracks and repeat it for the game's two expansion packs. Now I'm going to touch on pre-emphasis. Pre-emphasis, in terms of CDs, is an artificial boost of a track's high frequencies. Quake's original soundtrack is mastered with this. It attempts to improve the signal-to-noise ratio by making better use of the dynamic range of a channel of audio. When it is played back, the player generally de-emphasizes the track on the fly to change the frequency response to a more flat curve. However, when the track is ripped, pre-emphasis is not accounted for and therefore it plays back distorted. Because Quake's soundtrack originally ran off the disc, it was either de-emphasized on the fly, or back in the day, some older drives featured analog outputs which would then connect your PC sound card to a special cable. So now that we're running off of our hard drive, we need to account for this de-emphasis on our own. To do this, we're going to grab a copy of SOX, or Sound Exchange. This is a command line interface which can do all kinds of magical things to your audio files. We're going to throw it into the folder in which our game's audio is located, and we're going to create a batch file. We're going to instruct SOX to de-emphasize all of our tracks in the process, and have it name our tracks accordingly. In the batch file, we're going to set it up to invoke SOX with the command SOX. Then point it to the name of the track we want de-emphasized, like track1.wave. Then, 
we give the output an appropriate name, in this case, track 02.wave, and so on down the list for each song. We'll then finish off the command with deemp. This tells Sox to de-emphasize a track for us. By the end, your batch file should look something like this. Run the command and your file should be outputted in the same folder. Keep in mind that only the original base game soundtrack needs to be de-emphasized as its two expansion packs did not come with pre-emphasized audio. Now that we've de-emphasized the original soundtrack and have all three soundtracks ripped to CDDA quality WAV files, we can now embed them into our game. Start by taking the base game's music that we just de-emphasized and put it in a folder labeled Music in the id1 folder. Do the same for each of the expansions, putting the first expansion's music into the hypnotic folder, in its own music folder, and the second expansion's music into the Rogue folder in its own music folder. Also, make sure that the first track is always called track 02.wave, and each track that follows is the number after. This is how the soundtrack works. So the base game soundtrack goes from track 02 to track 11, and the two expansions each go from track 02 to track 09. And that's it. We've set up Quake to run beautifully on a modern system. Now you can get to killing all the monsters you want while patiently awaiting the release of Quake Champions. If you've enjoyed this video or found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.